Gravit Lux. Gravit Lux. Gravit Lux. You want me to show you how to make the best Gravit Lux this? Okay, I would love to do that. Now, Gravit Lux is actually incredibly simple to make. It's really quick and it's really easy. It's just, just the way I like it, isn't it? Curing takes a bit of time, but it's not necessarily work. It just takes a bit more time. But still, so many fail. That's because of one trick. And if that's incorporated, it will lift your Gravit Lux onto another level. Three Michelin star level, that is. It's a big call. I know, I know. But that's why I learned that technique at the three Michelin star restaurant at the Hotel de Ville at Philippe Rochard's. Now, who am I? Um, I'm Walter Traub. I owned and I managed and I run some of the best restaurants in Europe. And now I run my own cooking school. And today I'm going to show you how to make the best Gravit Lux days. So, why do most of us only cure salmon and not any other type of fish? Well, theoretically you can cure any other fish too, as long as it is very thick fleshed fish. Salmon, it's a bit like pork, is usually unique in terms of curing because the muscles are very tender with the perfect amount of fat, which gives cured salmon a totally unique creamy, chewy texture. Now, what do you use, farmed fish or wild fish? Well, for queuing, farmed is always better. The meat is softer, the meat is fattier. It makes it more melting in your mouth. Now, for the brine, you need salt and sugar, plus spices. Today, we use some dill, a bit of orange, and then you can also add some alcohol, like aquavit or vodka. Now, is gravid like actually a recipe, if you ask me? Not really. It's more like a cooking technique. You can change the fish and you can change the flavor, but the technique, the technique will always be the same. Techniques are the grammar of cooking. Recipes are just a vocabulary. It's the techniques that turn you into a master chef. You need to understand that. Cooking success goes as follows. Number one, quality of ingredients. That's, that's where it all starts. Number two, the technique. Number three is the understanding of the chemistry and to some extent the history. And the last thing is the recipe. But why does everyone focus on the recipe? Why start? It's like learning with a new language. We think if we understand a few words, we can speak the language. But it doesn't make sense because without grabber, the words don't make sense. It's like taking a few music notes and mix them together. That doesn't make a great tune, does it? It's like playing the lottery. You know, there are too many variables if you just mix things together. Recipes are actually not at all important. The technique we use today is dry curing and not white, wet curing or brining. I hope that doesn't confuse you too much, but dry curing dries the meat out and draws out water. Wet curing or brining makes the brine flow into the meat and then back out, leading to a very different result. Cover the meat with salt and sometimes sugar, which steadily dissolves and diffuses itself into the flesh and so enhances flavor, color, and improves the texture. It's a form of preservation, but with Gravid Lux, we cure it just for a few days, not weeks. The fish, after the curing period, will still have lots of water in its flesh and it still needs chilling. And then you just pick the dill off the stems and set the leaves aside for the next few days when you need it to cover it and then you chop them, the stems, you mix it with salt, you mix it with sugar, honey and spices and zest them with orange and orange juice and aquavit. Now when you use honey it's obviously much more authentic but you need to know that honey tastes much sweeter so in case you use honey use a third less than the recipe says below. You have the recipe below. Yay, you have the recipe. And now I'll give you the technique, my first secret technique. Are you ready? Now salt and sugar and spices can easily migrate through the flesh, but not at the same speed or as easily through the skin, the fat and the bone. And that's the one reason why all recipes fail you. Yes, you heard me. Hey, I'm not failing you, I'm not failing you. I'll show you how it's done right. You do what the recipes tell you and you make a nice looking Gravit Lux and you store it in the fridge for a few days and then you take it out and suddenly it starts to smell fishy. It's off. Why? 
because the brine could not get through the shield of skin and the fat and it left the fish meat raw underneath the skin. So to get round that you need to poke holes into the skin as well as the meat. Now don't worry about the little holes in the meat, they will close up as you cure the fish because the fish will shrink. Now you do that with the tip of a very sharp paring knife and you do that all over the skin and through those holes the brine can bypass the heart to penetrate skin and fat and cure the fish evenly from both sides and not stay longer raw underneath the skin which will lead eventually to spoiling the fish. Equally important to that is obviously slow curing. So don't use too much cure. The slow curing gives you a better tasting fish and a longer lasting result. The salt and the sugar levels in the center should match those ones on the outer layer. Too much brine will over salt the fish. It will seal the outside. It will dry it out. It makes it rubbery. It makes it too salty. And the good ratio of salt and sugar and curing time you get in the recipe be below. So take a tray, half the cure on the bottom, fish on the top, skin side down, rest of the cure on the top, in the fridge, turn it every 12 hours or so and brine it for two to two and a half days. There's simply too little salt and sugar in this method ever over salt the fish. It will always turn out perfect. So it does not really matter if you leave it for half a day longer. You cannot do it in less. Once you made it, it will last in the fridge for up to a week or a little longer. And if you want it to last longer than that, you can add a teaspoon of ascorbic acid or vitamin C powder to the cure. Now what will that do? Well, the vitamin C powder will slow down the oxidization of the fish fat. That's what usually goes off first. It's the fat. It's not needed, but in case you want to store it longer, it's a good tip to know. You just wipe off the brine. There's no need to wash it. Dry it immediately on kitchen paper. Brush the gravid lux with olive oil to soften its surface. It acts a bit like a moisturizer, you know? Next, wash and dry the chopped the dill. If you over chop your herbs too fine, you spoil them. Check out my video on how to learn about herbs. And then spread it all over the fish. Press it down. Do not rub the fish with cloud rub. It will not dry out the dill. It will make it sweat. It will make it condensate and it will make it go off. You need to rub the fish in a thin cloth or muslin cloth. Just press a cloth on it. That allows the dill to dry out and the fish to breathe. The dill aroma can integrate itself into the fish and that takes time, ideally 12 hours and of course in the fridge. The dry dill will also then perfectly stick to the fish rather than being all over the place. The fish just remove the muslin cloth, slice with a super sharp knife like so. You can remove those chewy middle line like here by basically making a V-cut incision they get around it. You just need to make that cut as you cut along and then you can rate it up and you probably wonder where gravid lux is from. Well apparently it comes from Sweden from 14th century and it means buried salmon, grave, lux. So at that time was too expensive. The Swedes developed a unique technique. I mean if you can call it such a thing. They filleted the fish. It was placed into a hole in the ground then covered with birch bark, some water, some the fish's blood and some local herbs and spices. Now you could imagine that that would be a rather distinctive flavor. It basically would stink similar like surströming, this sort of famous fermented herring. If you think about it, you know, surströming is also Swedish and, and gravid lux, that's Swedish, but gravid lux is probably the lucky one because it made it over to Norway. And the Norwegian introduced then basically honey and salt into the recipe. And it became a pretty amazing dish. If you look at the other hand, surströming, surströming, that never made it out of Sweden, yeah? So what that is, it still stinks. So if you think gravid lux, I think it's not just because of the grave, you know, grave salmon. It's probably because it tasted a bit grave too, isn't it? <laughs> it, might have, it might have sent a few people under the ground too. Anyway, so... Lucky Gravid Lux, you made it over to Norway and shoe trimming is, if you have ever had that stuff. Oh, it's just wrong. Anyway, try it out if you're tough.
Thank you for watching my video and I look forward to seeing you in another video.